So let's check this again. All right. Um, so I'm grading this very easy, right? So I just want to make that clear. If it's hollow and you have a face and the faces are holes, right? And it's thick. It's not just one, one plain thick, which we're about to do. Um, and you have a lid and the pumpkin piece. Uh, and you have your initials carved on the bottom and you turn it in as an OBJ, which you're going to learn how to do all right now. Um, you're going to get full credit, right? So I don't really care how good or bad your face is as long as it has these requirements. I'm hoping you have fun with this. I hope when we go to the maker space and we have these printed out and you start painting, I hope you have a little fun with these and you're kind of proud of them. Um, I'm actually going to keep them until Halloween. So you get them back the day of Halloween. Halloween is Wednesday the 31st. Um, I, the grand opening of the steam building is the 30th. Um, so I was going to decorate the maker space with these on the 30th and then um, give them back to you on the 31st. Okay, so that you'll get them for Halloween, but only the day of. So thank you. Um, like I said, uh, I, this is my first time teaching this to you guys, so hopefully I have the order of operations okay, but I'm reserving the right to say like, oh, oh wait, undo, undo, undo. Um, so in that, in that realm of being able to start over, everyone, I want you to hit Command S right now, Command S to save, and then I want you to do File, Save Scene As. And you're going to call it something like jack-o'-lantern faces done. Something to indicate that you're done with the faces. So basically you're going to do two save scene as is or two save as is. So the first save as, you're calling it faces done and you're kind of locked in. You have this copy. All right. Now we're going to do a second save as. So I had my first save as, I'm going to do a second save as now. File, save scene as, and now I'm going to call it like 3D ready, 3D print ready, or print ready, whatever I want to indicate. So that way if I screw up in my, my, my print ready mode, I have my faces pristine and untouched, right? So I have my jack-o'-lanterns pristine and untouched. All right. Before we do anything else, after you do your two save as is, I want you to take a moment right now and double check that stuff isn't too warped or distorted or stuff didn't get stretched out too far or you don't have skinny faces. So watch really quickly. I have each one of these as an example um, kind of demonstrates a problem or two. So when I was making this guy, somehow when I was moving his mouse around, I, I kind of pulled it so it's all kind of uneven. While it is okay, you probably want to polish it up. So either by going to vertexes or faces, you might need to move a few things back or a few things forward um, to kind of get it to look more like it's kind of all on the same circular plane. So you might need to kind of readjust some of the vertices so that it's not stretching or moving it around too much. Um, you can do it. I mean, the, the underbite there was like kind of the big issue. It looks like this ridge got pulled out a little too far when I was sculpting its face. So maybe I want to kind of calm that down a little bit. So there, right? So that's one example. Oops, sorry. Another example is like uh, when I was messing with his mouth, part of the ridge here got a little warped. So again, I can kind of mess with a vertex or two and kind of try and get it back kind of aligned. So you just want to kind of take a moment now that you've cut out and carved the face and kind of give it a rotate it around with alt left clicking and kind of just make sure that you got this one's actually pretty good. This one doesn't have too many issues. Make sure that you kind of have it all nice and smooth. The other problem, like right here, like my there, right? These got kind of indented in a little bit. Let me pull those out so they're not so indented. There you go. Right, something more like, yeah, who's yelling? So yeah, my eyes were a little messed up. Oop, selected the wrong vertex. Just kind of smoothing it out. That's something you probably want to double check before moving on. 
Um, a few of you, I noticed if you had a thin stem, uh, double check that your, th your stem is workable. If you have a lot of these tiny little ridges for whatever reason, uh, if you see these little black spots here, what I'm looking at is the inside of the, the face or the back side of the face. It's probably too skinny to print. So what you need to do is kind of grab some edges and kind of move them until they go away. There, right? That definitely got, got away, but then that caused this problem. This problem probably needs to kind of be tucked in. So definitely if you see these black edges, it means that your faces are so skinny, they're showing the inside out part. They're kind of inside out or they're showing the, the opposite side of the face. So notice when they just kind of move around a few edges, it kind of cleans it up. Um, so just kind of be on the lookout for that. Something that's super, super skinny. And then a lot of you, I'm seeing stuff like this. And you might be okay. But there is a limitation to how skinny and how sharp our things can print. 0.1 millimeter, which is pretty small. But when it gets to, to really skinny stuff, and so I'm talking like right here, or maybe my teeth, I might want to thicken those up a little bit, okay? So I can do a couple things here with the nose. Like this bridge right here might be a little too skinny. So one thing I could do is I could go to edge mode. I can double click my entire nose and I can hit extrude. And I can kind of give myself a, a few more edges and faces here to kind of help make a, a tighter bridge. Looks like I need to re-sculpt it a little bit. So I'm going to pull, I want it to be more triangular. So I'm going to pull that up. There we go. All right. Pull these two in. Make it look like it's, I'm going to definitely pull these two in. Something like that. So that's a much thicker bridge between the eyes and the nose. Um, that should help. Like things can happen. Things can print out. And then if it's too skinny, it might break in the print. It might break when you're removing support material. It might clog, it might clog the paint as it's going through. Or it might break, you know, it's going to be a lot more fragile. So the thicker spaces you have, the better. Same thing with these teeth here. Um, while these teeth look kind of cool, again, they might not print well. So I could just kind of widen them up a little bit. You know, I'm just going to go to the, not to the point, but to the, oops. What? Why aren't you widening? Oh, oh uh, that didn't work. So I'm going to have to move, the scale tool didn't work. So I'm just going to have to kind of, there, right? Just kind of make my teeth a little wider. Um, making something sharp and pointy is not the 3D printer's strong suit. Um, you can give it a go. I just want to say you've been warned. And sometimes if it breaks, like for example, if, if you've seen the skinny black one, the one with the, the, the skinny black that filament, thank you. Um, it kind of, because it's kind of like the evil one, having the support material on, on the pumpkin kind of makes it look like you've got like little spidery things crawling inside them or outside of them. Um, so it could be an accident in your favor. It's like Bob Ross, right? There's, no, there's, only, there's only happy little accidents. There's no such thing as an accident, right? You can just kind of work it into your design. So um, the printer's pretty um, adaptive, but just saying, you, know, you might want to move the teeth. You could wait because the next step, we're gonna, a step four, four, ugh. a few steps down the line, we're gonna make the the thickness of it, and so that might actually be able to help as well. Okay. Questions on? So take a moment right now and just kind of double check uh, your overlaps. The kind of, this is kind of called an overlap, or smooth it out if it needs to. Uh, just just kind of clean up your model now that I've given you those warnings. Nothing is too skinny. Nothing is too sharp. You know. Uh, double check that your stem isn't too skinny. Uh, most of you have, I was kind of looking, most of you have thick enough stems. Um, be warned though, if it's too skinny, you might break. So maybe thicken it up by grabbing edge loops on your stem. I'm a little worried about the horns here, but I'm kind of like, let's see, let's see what happens. Uh, this stem is probably thick enough. Might be a little fragile. Okay. Just take a moment or two to check that out. Get yourself cleaned up. And then we'll move on to the next step.
either either with multi-cut or in a similar process that you did with your face. These do not have to be very accurate. These do not have to be very big, but it's gonna really help identify if we kind of punch a few holes on the opposite side. So here's my face, kind of pick the back opposite side over here, right? Um, it's gonna do, it's gonna serve two purposes here. We're gonna cut a few holes here um, in the vague shape of your initials um, for two reasons. One, to help identify when I print them all out. Two, because um, I'm gonna have the prints, right? I'm not gonna be able to do that. And then two, um, the printer is, is a resin printer. It has a pool of resin. If you look over here at me in my hand, right? And traditional printers are top down with heat and they melt the plastic and they squeeze it out, a little thing, and it prints layer by layer and goes upward. This printer has a pool of resin and it swooshes it down and it has a laser, laser that cooks, that cooks the resin and then slowly lifts it up. So it actually prints it upside down. If you print something that is cupped, like this pumpkin, it, it kind of creates a vacuum. So you, you start printing this like cup, and it creates a seal with the resin. So if it doesn't have like a vent hole, um, it could like pull off layers. It could like pull off the whole object off of the top, off of the, the inverted part of the, the, the platform. Um, there's a lot of problems that can happen if it gets cupped. So the, the hole on the opposite side is, is for one of two things. Drainage, if it's if it's facing downward, so like resin and, and the stuff can leak out of it, or if it's facing upward, it's like an air vent hole, so that when it gets lifted up, it's not creating a suction, right? Because that suction can cause all sorts of problems. So the orange kitty actually had that problem. And that's why it kind of looks a little lopsided. That's like one side of the face looks a little more drawn out than the other side. It's because that the cupping actually happened with this one. So they don't have to be too big. It's just to kind of create some drainage or a hole. So faces this side. I kind of want to go to the bottom back side over here and just make a very small little hole. So my initials would be JG. I'm going to do something like from about here to here. And then just going to make a very crude J, right? Like that, and then this is way too big. I'm gonna kinda move these in. So that's my J, something like that. Very crude on the bottom, no one's gonna really see it. Very small, and then this J, the, the J part's a little too big. It's gonna kinda pull this up. Yeah, Darren, what's up? If you wanted to use booleans with a text tool, again, when you put it in smooth mode, you might mess up. Yeah. If you want to use booleans, go for it. Go for it. I'm over here. It's very dark. So J, and then to do my G again, very crudely. Hi. It's so tiny. It's pizza. Got it. I want pizza. Mr. Yaman. Yeah. A what? A what? Wait, yeah. However, an E? A D? You can do something like this. D would be like right here to here, and then here to here. And then, like it, almost like an O. And then, oh, that guy's floating. So just do it. Do a D, do a shape like a little hole. Just do a little hole for a D, in the shape of a D without the hollow side. Good question. However you want. Good question. And I'll make my G. Again, very crudely. Uh, do the R without the hole. So just kind of. So my G is going to look kind of like a C. And again, that's too big. 
<laughs> nice and crude. So hopefully everyone understands what I mean by crude. Right, just a little hole. It's going to really help the print process. If you can identify it, great. All right. So I'm going to be, it looks like a JC, a J, uh, whatever works. We're going to do the lid, and then we'll do the, the, the technical stuff on Friday. Hope you're here Friday. Um, so the last thing we need is a lid so we can, like, lift up. So we can lift up and put the light in, obviously. Um, and we can, um, that's what pumpkins have. They have the lid. It's fairly simple. If you're dealing, if you have, if you're, if you're, uh, if you're pumpkin, I was about to say character. If your pumpkin has horns, make sure when you're cutting your lid, you're not putting, uh, eh, it could be your call. Is, are the horns or whatever's on top of the face or on top of the head going to be part of the lid or is it going to be part of there? So this one, I'm definitely going to make sure that the lid is not a part of it. Um, you do have to make it relatively large. Top. So it doesn't have to be too large. Let me turn on the light here for a second. Right? This thing has got to fit in there. Woo! Uh, this thing, it, it, so it's got to be like, I don't know, you do your best judgment there. Keep in mind, it's got to fit in this light. Um, usually, I got a, I got a tester when I put them out. I'm not having you do this, the portion stuff because the, the dimensions get rather distorted between going to here to the printer. So in my printer file, I have a little tester, and I kind of stick it in and make sure it kind of fits. Um, so just make sure it can fit in there somehow, right? You're also, because you're putting in that material to kind of make it, to diffuse the light a little bit, make sure you can kind of, big enough, we're going to have to squeeze our fingers in there. It's going to be a lot of fun. So your lid. So when you're making your lid decision, Keep that in mind. You're going to go to edge loop. You need to make it edge loop. Actually, before you make the edge loop, told you I reserved the right. Okay. So for the lid, I can do the edge loop first. Let's do the edge loop. Let's do the edge loop. Go to mesh tools, insert edge loop. Mesh tools, insert edge loop. And it does switch it to one mode for a second. I'm going to make an edge loop at the widest possible, I think. So my horns start at this edge right here. So I'm going to make my edge loop right there. So I'm going to make a, an edge loop so that I have a very, very tiny set of faces right here. Did you miss that? I'm going to do it again. I'm going to grab another one, this guy. So my edge loop here. It's better, so I'm going to hop, it's going to be right along this set right here, and I'm just going to kind of make a very skinny set of faces, like so. I'll repeat one more time. So this guy, his edge is right, I'm going to go big with this one, he's going to have a really big lid. But again, I just, I make a tiny set of faces right there. Now before we delete it, You've all carved pumpkins, right? Has anyone carved a pumpkin and you have a perfectly circled lid and then you go to put the lid back on after you put the candle on and the lid slips right through? That's never happened to you? Liars. So at the back of that place where you made the edge loop, go to vertex mode, right? So that edge loop I made is right here. Give yourself like a little nook, like a little notch, right? So you're going to grab a few vertexes and you're going to kind of Pull it forward, pull it, so kind of give it like a little divot. And I might need to do several, right? You want like a little, a little corner so that it's arranged in the right spot. 
and so that it kind of expands out just a little one so you kind of know where it is. Might be actually easier to do. I did the wrong spot. I'm going to grab this edge right here. These two edges. I'm going to pull them up. Yeah. Just like that. Maybe scale them in. Just to kind of... So I have like one little identifier here that lets me know the lid for the pumpkin goes right here. Does that make sense? So if you looked... Like I have this on each one of my pumpkins. There's a little divot or knock in the back that, that orients. It helps do two things. It orients the lid so you know which way is forward, which way is back. And then it'll help kind of create so that it doesn't fall through or makes it harder to fall through. The, the other kitty, the AP computer science teacher, Ms. Donaldson, borrowing it to show off to her students. Um, that one, the lid, I didn't make the notch and the lid fell through. The lid falls through every once in a while. So just like a little notch, just like a little notch, I'm going to do it again. So once again, it's right there. So I go to vertex or edge. I select them on both sides of the cut, right? This is where the cut's going to happen. I'm just going to kind of pull them in and I'm going to scale them in. I accidentally pulled it a little too high. Forward and down. There you go. Way too high. There you go. And then kind of squeeze it in. It's gonna it's just gonna be really helpful when the lid gets up there. And one more. Gotta do one more. There you go. Okay, next let's delete the lid. And this will be the last thing we do today. Right click, go to face mode. So that edge loop should have made a tiny series of faces. Sh click on one of those faces, shift, double click, and you get the ring. You should get a ring by doing that trick. Once again, click on one face, shift, double click the other one, and then press delete and you get a little lid. After you delete it, you have this space, go to edge mode, double click that edge. You should get the whole ring and you're going to have to expand, hit R and you're going to have to kind of grow it out again like that. Right? So I'm deleting a series of faces. So once again, I'm doing it again, click one face. Shift, double click the one right next to it, delete. It creates a little gap. Go to edge mode. I need to make it a little bit bigger. Double click that edge, hit scale, and scale it back out. Maybe make it a little higher. So that way, if the, if the, if the lid overlaps a little bit, totally fine. You have a good lid then, right? One more time for repetition's sake. I'm going to go to face mode after doing the edge loop. Shift, double click, hit delete, have a little gap. Then go to edge mode, double click the ring, scale it out, 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 out. Maybe give it a little up, 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 maybe a little more out, out, out. If it's overlapping a little bit, that's totally fine. Like if you do it like that big, like it might give it some character. Like so if you have your lid overlapping just a bit, just a scooch, that's fine too. So I'm overdoing it on this one. Okay. That is gonna take us to the bell. Um, you're more than welcome to stand here during flex time and get caught up. Um, it's about to be flex time, please save. Friday, we got three steps, and then we're turning these in. Friday, we got three steps, we're turning in. Please restart your machines. Please restart your machines.